A grand jury today indicted an Alawai boater for terroristic threatening following a run-in at the harbor last month. KITV4's Catherine Cruz has more on what led to the fight and why boaters are worried about what to do if something else happens. Catherine? Well, Paula, we're told that police arrested Edward Cranbull after he threatened boaters and damaged at least one vessel. He's out on bail tonight. Jim March says it was about two and a half weeks ago that he watched another boater run into the yacht dock next to him. I uh, couldn't help but notice that, that he actually bumped this boat sitting behind us. Um, at that point, I went over to render assistance. I thought the guy was dead in the water. Barch claimed the man then tried to leave, claiming he never hit the other vessel, and then threatened him when Barch insisted he shouldn't leave the scene. He basically said, if you want to die, I'm going to kill you, and he crawled off of his boat. And at that point, I realized he was serious. Bart says he was shoved several times. Bystander stepped in, but that's when Cronbull wrestled free and got back on his boat, revved his engines to get away. In the process, Bart says he apparently did more damage. What it did is it shoved my friend's boat onto the dock and, and cracked, damaged the hull. But that apparently wasn't the only altercation. Another boater here at G Dock says there was another run in a short while earlier. Boater Jason Allen told police that he and a friend were in a small dinghy like this one when they were threatened by a man who was speeding in the harbor. Allen says the man tried to run them over not once but twice and all the while yelling that he was going to kill them. Allen later identified Crohanbull as the angry boater. The incident prompted the manager of the fuel dock to complain that when boaters called for help, there was some confusion between Coast Guard, DLNR and police about who had jurisdiction to respond. Police did ultimately make the arrest. In a letter sent by the state land director this week, Laura Thielen admitted the need to have a dispatch capability seven days a week, 24 hours a day. She said, however, police properly made the arrest, and now the agencies will determine who will take the lead in the case. But that may be a little consolation to boaters like Jim Birch. Part of the issue is that state enforcement officers aren't on the scene 24 hours a day. And coincidentally, Birch has been on a wait list for a permanent slip at the Alawai and just this week was assigned a space. But he's just discovered the slip is only a few hundred feet away from the man he says who threatened him. Laura?